Suppose you were told you have to stand nose to nose in the Roman Colosseum with a great beast. The stakes, well, existence. But there's a catch. You have 20 years to the exact second before this epic cinematic encounter takes place. What would you do? I bet a pretty penny that you do a little prep work, researching the playing field, studying your opponent's tendencies, and training like your life depended on it. Because quite frankly, it does. You'd spend 19 years, 364 days, and too many seconds to count, putting your pretty cool meat suit in the best possible position to win. Building the physical and mental skills to propel you to victory on this judgment day, right? And although you may shrug this off like a silly thought experiment, I'm gonna tell you why this silly visualization can drastically change your life. Yo, yo, yo! What is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. All right. Let's bring this back on to reality. Because in this day and age, we are luckily not called upon for battle in the Colosseum. But that's not to say that we don't have equally serious, yet completely different challenges on our hands. In fact, I can tell you all about them. The 21st century battle that we face is with morbidity or the condition of being diseased. And just as highlighted in our Roman Colosseum thought experiment, it is not something that we typically encounter here and now. Instead, it compounds over time and surprises us modern humans 10, 20, 30 years down the line. Not only typically impacting one's lifespan, in a bad way, but drastically deteriorating something even more important. Yeah, more important than lifespan. Our health span, or the truly healthy years of one's life. This is why I am here telling you today that there is a lion out there. And the odds are, we'll all have our day of battle. It's just a matter of when. So, why the hell aren't we training? Better yet, what should we be training? And that, my longevity friends, is the million dollar question that we discuss to some extent in basically every single video on this channel. And we deploy in a slow, sustainable way in the weekly challenges that we host in Patreon. Links below if you wanna check it out. As for today, we'll once again take a look into this very question, peeking into the benefits of a overall healthy lifestyle, courtesy of a new 21-year population-based perspective study conducted across one of the longest-lived countries in the world, Japan. And we're going to specifically explore how mundane healthy lifestyle habits can move the longevity needle starting in midlife and continuing to make a difference all throughout those golden years. And not to uh, give anything away, but this may very well be another example of how healthy habits compound on each other, impacting lifespan and the way too often overlooked health span. Because let me remind you, the average person here in the U.S. spends the last 16 years of their life in a state of morbidity, essentially being somewhat disabled and debilitated from doing what they truly love, what fills them up and gives them joy from their life. And that straight up ain't cool. So let's see what this new data can tell us. The study, published this month in the journal Age and Aging, Researchers out of Osaka University in Japan assessed the impact of lifestyle modifying behaviors on life expectancies from middle age onwards. And they did it by analyzing how these factors deployed at different ages across different genders in populations with and without disease move the longevity needle, well, the lifespan needle, but possibly the longevity needle too. We'll, we'll talk about that later. And let me tell you, this study was big. 49,000 plus individuals across 45 areas of Japan. Big. Also, big in time. Spanning 21 years from 1988 to 2009. 
conducting several follow-ups per participant throughout. Now, one of the cool things that made this study extra interesting was the fact that Japan has long been known as a country with a longer lifespan. So indirectly, one could argue that we are seeing data from the best of the best. But let's not digress. Let's talk about how intense these lifestyle habits actually were. I mean, they gotta be pretty serious, right? Well, not so much. A self-administered questionnaire measured the eight modifiable healthy lifestyle components tracked in this study, including consumption of fruit, fish, and milk, physical activity, BMI, smoking status, sleep duration, and alcohol consumption. And based off previous data, researchers allocated points for healthy behaviors that were totaled up and analyzed. And I know, I don't like self-questionnaires either, but unfortunately that's how a lot of these big observational studies roll. So we just gotta keep that in mind as we make our own overall conclusions. That being said, what'd they find? The results. First, at the highest level, it seems like five was the lucky number. As researchers found that adopting five or more healthy lifestyles increased life expectancy even in individuals 80 plus years of age. However, the maximum lifespan benefits were seen when these habits were intact earlier in life. Next, and interestingly enough, these habits were prominent regardless of the presence of a major comorbidity or multiple morbidities, ranging from each stage of life from middle age on. In fact, the lifespan boosting benefits were more pronounced among patients with multiple morbidities, which when you think about it, kind of makes sense because they definitely have more room for improvement in those populations. Next, getting a tad bit more granular, it just so happened that all of the modifiable healthy lifestyle habits were associated with a decrease in all cause mortality among both men and women, meaning the more healthy lifestyles that they partook in, the decreased risk of all-cause mortality, which is good. But were there any habits that stood out in the pack? Oh, uh, a few? Just read the script? Okay. When started midlife around age 40, the reduction of drinking alcohol, never being a smoker, a healthy BMI, and consistent adequate sleep were at the front of the statistical class. However, the top lifespan supporters were different for men and women. The largest gain in women was by reducing the consumption of alcohol, while not being a smoker led the way for men. Funny how it ended up being two things to stop doing or to not do, rather than things to start doing. Kind of makes you think. So with that, what exactly can we conclude? from all this. Let's start with what the authors had to say. They stated that the results were clear. A higher number of modified healthy behaviors was directly associated with greater longevity in both men and women, and that the lifetime gains were highest by reducing alcohol, not smoking, losing a little weight, and increasing sleep, overall adding up to six years of life for healthy 40-year-olds. Now, in my eyes, a large observational study like this just adds to the growing stack of literature that suggests we, you, me, everyone else, are all in more control than we think. That owning your health doesn't need to be fancy. This study started in 1988 and ultimately found that stacking very doable healthy habits, with a few of them being avoiding clearly unhealthy things, makes a significant health difference, no matter what your current state looks like. And although we need to take this data with a grain of salt, understanding that no large-scale observational study is gonna be perfect, of course, especially with limitations such as only being in a single country, which could be a benefit as well, relying on self-reporting, which ugh, only looking at lifespan without really adding any health span measurements, and obviously not being able to confirm any causality, which we wouldn't expect. But we have to remember, studies like this help us prepare and build our training regimen, just like we do in our weekly longevity challenges, where we as a group implement slow and sustainable longevity focused change week by week, habit by habit, focusing on getting healthy from the inside out. 
if interested, you could find the links in the description below. Because in the end, the cold hard truth is, at some point, we're all gonna have our day when we get called to rumble in the Coliseum. And adversity doesn't follow a schedule. And it certainly doesn't care where you are in life. So there's only one thing to really do. Own that shit. Put yourself in a position to not only be successful and triumphant when you must battle, but to enjoy the newly gained cellular and metabolic prosperity along the way. It's a win-win if you ask me. So ask your doctor what owning it can do for your health. And then go do it anyway.